In C-Log3, middle grey is 34.3% IRE. And if we expose for that, we get a well-balanced image with great looking skin tones and a video that are ready for color grading. C-Log3 gives you an extra stop of a dynamic range and more control over your highlights and shadows. That extra stop of light is highly sought after when doing video work and color grading. The trick is to know how to expose correctly without proper in-camera tools that the R6 lacks. And if you don't want to retrain your brain to sort of see the real image, what do you do? How do you set correct exposure? This is how I typically set up my shot. First I set my camera to native ISO, which for C-Log3 is 800. I set my shutter to two times the frame rate for proper motion blur. I often shoot 25 frames per second, so the correct frame rate will be 1 50th of a second. Lastly, I set my aperture to what I creatively want my scene to look like. That way we have the best possible starting point with max dynamic range, proper motion blur and a desired depth of field. I will show you two ways to set proper exposure. One way will only use the in-camera tools of the R6 and one way will be a little bit more advanced. The fastest and probably the best way is to use an 18% neutral grey card and an external monitor. Then use the external monitor to set your exposure typically using false colors. I use the Nina 5 and it has all the tools to make your video work a little bit easier. False colors on the Nina 5 let you see 12 IRE regions overlaid on this weird looking image. It's not always the best tool for exposing skin tones, but it's really helpful with setting your exposure. All we need to know is what each color represents in the IRE scale and we can adjust accordingly. If we adjust our exposure until our middle grey lands in the 45% IRE range on the Ninja 5, my skin tone lands in the 55% range, which is often referred to as properly exposed skin tones for fair complexion. Just a quick note, this is more of a math and science approach to proper exposure. It has nothing to do with the creative look or the subjective look of what you think looks best. When it comes down to it, you decide what you think looks best. Make sure your image isn't clipping, so dark purple or red is bad. Orange and dark blue is a warning that you are close to messing up as well. If you have to make a choice between highlights or shadows, I would prefer to overexpose rather than underexpose. If you don't have an external monitor with false colors, here is an easy solution for you that you can also mimic using only the built-in camera tools of the R6 to nail properly exposed skin tones. Go to camera tab 7 and turn zebra settings on. Then you set zebra 1 to 40% plus minus 5. This should match your 18% grey card as 18% grey in C-Log is equal to 34.3% IRE or proper exposure. So when your grey card fills up with zebras, you have proper exposure. The plus side with this is that it will also be equal to properly exposed skin tones. If you for some reason don't want to use a grey card, you can nail properly exposed skin tones by adjusting the zebras in your Canon R6 until your face turns striped and that way you know you have properly exposed skin tones. Even if I use the Ninja 5 and false colors to ensure that I have nailed exposure, I admit that I always check my zebras to ensure that my skin tones and the skin tones of my subject are perfect. Using C-Log3 on your Canon R6 is a huge addition to an already amazing camera and it gives us more exposure and color information in the details in the shadows and the highlights. This extends the Canon R6 dynamic internal range and increases its usable latitude and provides us with more grading flexibility. If you get your exposures right, the video out of the R6 is at a professional level and it will work for most circumstances. The one thing you don't want to do is to underexpose your footage when using C-Log3. It will introduce a lot of unwanted noise in the shadows and it can also introduce some strange banding in your image. I find it hard to trust the LCD of the Canon R6, but with Zebras enabled I feel I can trust the exposure and after using this amazing camera for almost a year, I think it holds up very well and it's an amazing piece of equipment. Especially with C-Log3 and even more so with an external recorder like the Nina 5. Let me know in the comments if you have any further questions and maybe we can even bundle that up into a future video. That's gonna be it for me, but I hope that you got something out of this video. I know I did when I did the research for it.
If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. It would mean the world. See you in the next one, or maybe in this one. Peace out.